In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My beloved one today is 13th day of December, being Tuesday, and with three of Advent year A. Today, the Monday Church celebrates St. Lucy, Virgin, and Matter of the Church. So remember all the Lucy in our prayers today, all the living and dead, all their patron saints, who she is, and as this grace daughter of the church to intercede for all of us. Our readings will be coming from Prophet Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, 9 to 13. Our response to Psalm will come from Psalm 34, verse 7a. Our gospel message will come from Matthew Gospel, chapter 21, verse 28 to 32. The theme of our message today is Doing it is believing. Or what you believe you do. You don't do what you don't believe. And you don't believe what you do. You don't do what you don't believe. That's why today you can see Jesus addressing this issue of believing. By doing what you believe. That's what means you believe truly. Because it's easy for people to tell you, we talk everything, but they are talking not from their hearts. They don't believe what they're saying. That's why you call them liars. That's why you call them hypocrites. Say one thing, do the other one. So, such a personality is not acceptable anywhere in the world. But sometimes that world always the, the leadership in most African countries. People who are liars. Who are not honest to themselves. Who are dishonest in very little things. And they want to be addressed as your, His Excellency or Her Excellency. That's why Jesus want to address this issue today. When He stood, called the elders of the Pharisees and Sadducees, the elders, these are the elders of the people, the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes at the and, and the Pharisees, he called them. These are the leaders of the people. I think we should call the leaders of Nigeria today and to ask them this question. I said, what do you think? I was asking them to think, dialoguing with them, say, what do you think? A man has two sons. He asked the first one to go to his farm, vineyard, and work. He said, Father, I will do it too. I left. At the point, he repented of what he told his father and went to the farm, to the vineyard, and walked. The father went to the second son and said, go to my vineyard and walk for me. He said, yes, sir, I will do it. Regard this as done. And he never went to that farm. He asked those elders, who of the two children did what the father asked him to do? They said the first one. Say, look at it. Begin to tell them, look at it. It's in doing that we know you believe. Not just I believe by lips. That's why Jesus said, faith without good work is dead. You say you believe, I will do, but you are not do it, going to do anything. But the one who said, I wouldn't let us say, look, but it's proper, I do it. And we started doing it. And he then talked to them and said, Truly I say to you, the tax collectors and harrows go into the kingdom of God before you. They will go to the kingdom of God before you. How can sinners, tax collectors, and harrows go into the kingdom of God before all of us, many of us who say we are Christians, who say we are uh, honest men? Because we say we're honest men, we say we are Christians by lips, not by action, not by our do, do, doing. 
He said, for John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. You didn't believe him because you didn't do what he asked you to do. But the task collectors and Haros believed him. Yes, the task collectors and sinners believed him and Haros. Believed him and changed their life. And repented of their way of life. But your own. You never do so. And even when you saw it, you did not after all repent and believe him. No. That will tell you the hardness of heart. You have seen all what is happening in Nigeria and you are still remaining where you are. You are insensitive to your environment. You are insensitive to the feeling of people. You are so bottled up with yourself and your self-interest that you don't care who dies to give you a cup of tea. Not what you see yourself doing. Don't care. In face of reality, Nigerians are dying in thousands and hundreds and thousands and hundreds. Villages are sacked by a, just a few group of people, marginalizing every person, eating 90% of the world and leaving the 10%, uh, about 2% of the population, having 90% of our world and leaving the rest 1% to the 90%, 90 something percent of people, leaving us in poverty and are wasting money, flying private jets and doing many things. Having excess money no more, they don't spend their money in dollars. And that's the type of people who want to continue to rule us. We say no. That for people who rule us are people who will do what we want, that will serve our cause, not their personal interest. Imagine you see any person in quality of power who serves his interest, he can never be a good leader, he must be a criminal. And he won't be a gent of darkness and decay and underdevelopment because he's full of self. And self is a criminality itself. Now, why I say, Haros repented and went back to the world, God. We ask these people who have been doing very bad things in Nigeria to repent. You have been disobedient and useless. Now, repent and be obedient and be useful to your people. You refuse. You are insisting, you want your disobedience and your uselessness must continue, otherwise you will kill every person because you're tied to your head. You have monopoly of violence. You're untouchables. You are acting gods. So as Jesus told them, truly I tell you, this is who will enter the kingdom before you. And when Jesus said this, they didn't like it for sure. Because that these people are doing what they had. But you had, you never did it. These people were in touch with reality and the environment and acted accordingly. But you refuse. And now why haven't said this to them? He dawned on them that that's that agents of the darkness of the people. Many of these people who find themselves in corridor of power before have not admitted that we are agents of darkness in Nigeria. Agents of underdevelopment in Nigeria that see parading themselves up and down thinking how to go into rule. Imagine a flooding man went in up to boast that they will rule, the flooding man must rule. If he doesn't rule, they will, will kill all of us. They have ruled and they will come to rule us. Anybody who doesn't obey them, they will kill him. Oh, let's watch and see them do it. And that all the people that are using that call them useful idiots. And they have manifested through it that useful idiots. People who are so self-centered that they hated their people. Hate, and they come to tell the people, vote for me because I'm from your tribe. The tribe he hated. The tribe he, he doesn't want to, he, that is, doesn't value anything for him. Imagine I think we're telling Northerners to vote. As a court has it, the blood, development has brought to the Northerners than dehumanizing them and enslaving them and using them for his personal gain. As to the what has it done to the Yoruba land by not dehumanizing them and enslaving them and benching them for his personal interest. And people who are still following them are not developed at all. 
That's what Jesus is letting them know. These people you rejected, these people you are punishing, these people you never accepted, these people you have marginalized, they are coming back to power. They will take back their country from you. It's not optional. God has decreed it and it will go like that. They are choosing a leader that will do it. And we lead them. A leader above board. A leader above impeccable. A leader that is uncorruptible. Who has shown his track record that is not corrupted, corrupted at all. He wants to serve the people. Not the people to serve him. But these people live out of our blood. They are parasites in our bloods. And that's why today, Prophet Zavania, this said this about them. Thus says the Lord, woe to her that is rebellious and defied. Rebellious and defied. This government have really rebelled against Nigerians. These are rebellious, they have defied our country. The so-called politicians have defied our country. They have rebelled against the community of the people of Nigerians. You see, the oppressing cities, she listened to no voice. This is who don't listen to any person. She accepts no correction. You can't correct them. You can't correct them. She does not trust in the Lord. These people don't believe in God at all, for sure. She does not draw near to her God. Doesn't cut to near to God who created them. They have they are not acting gods. And we're asking God is saying, I will change them. We're asking God to change their mind. Change them now or never. God said we change their speech of the people to a pure speech. God said we change it. And how that was the change he wants to bring. He wants to change. Many of us are rebelled against this nation. Many of us have defied this nation. Many of us have set the praise ourselves from God and doing acting gods. God said he wants to change the situation. We want to change the situation. We want to change our speech to pure speech. We want to change this country from consumption to production. We want to change this country from uselessness to usefulness. We want to change this country from disobedience to obedience. That's what we want to do. And God said that all of them may call on the name of the Lord. And serve him with one accord. All of us will call on the name of the Lord and serve him with one accord. No more disjointed voices. He said, every leader will now know that I have come to serve, not to be served. Not for us to feed him, but him to feed us. And care for us. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my, suppli my suppliants, the daughters of my dispersed ones, all those who will disperse ones, shall bring my offering. On that day, you shall not be put to shame because of the deeds by which you have rebelled against me. God telling us, I'm going to count those things against you. God is not interested in our sin. He's interested in our repentance. I'm not going to count it against you again. For then I will remove from your midst you are proudly exultant ones. One of those things that make you to be full of yourself, God will remove them. And all people who are like that will be removed. And you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mount. You will no more be haughty in this country. There's no more provision for that. For I will live in the midst of you a people humble and lonely, we have very humble people and lowly people. Yes, our leader will define our me method. We will need a humble and lonely leader, not full of arrogant and full of themselves. Who are, not who, who are boasting with what they're supposed to be ashamed of. They will seek refuge in the name of the Lord. Those who are left in Israel, 
they shall do no wrong, no wrong and utter no lies. The people who are going to rule us now will no more do it once and they will not utter lies. You citizens and we learn truthfulness. We learn how not to do the wrong things anymore. Because their leader will show them the standard. And they will follow him by imitating him. We have imitated our leaders and have grown lazy. And beyond dishonest and become fraudulent. and become consumers, not producers. I have separated ourselves from God and made ourselves gods. And that's why we can see this prophecy being fulfilled today. He said, nor shall there be found in their mouth a, des a deceitful tongue no more deceitful tongue. You can see one of the preservation can they know a tongue of deceitful song. Others are full of deceit. For they shall pasture and lie down, and none shall make them afraid again. They will not live in their country. No one will make them afraid again. That's a great hope. I was expecting the Messiah to come. Come 2023, we ask God to give us this message that will save us from this situation. We'll no more be afraid. We'll settle in our own country and pastor in our own country and be self-sufficient in our own country. No more slaves or dependent on others. And I want the same is one that stood this so way today, this say, The lowly one called and the Lord had him. The lowly one called and the Lord had him. Yes, because the lowly one is the one who is doing what he believes. And believing what he's doing. Not people who are dishonest. Who don't believe what they're doing or doing what they don't believe. And now why he said the Lord will answer them. And now why today we are celebrating St. Lucy, Virgin and Martha. St. Lucy, Virgin, and Matthew is something of reference to us today. In the days, in the world, where proscrimity is, is just like a celebrating good morning or celebrating morning, morning breakfast. We no more have veggies among us. Many of us have no more veggies. Many go to their husband, no more have veggies. But Lucy has shown it's possible to remain a virgin. Virginity is the glory and beauty of a woman. The day is removed from you is the day you are finished. And that's why once who see kept his, their, self, their heads are high. And when you're a virgin girl, you have a virgin marriage, husband. If you're a old woman, you expect a old husband. I will not know the joy of marriage life. And now why does Lucy stand out today? Lucy was a great and deep convinced Christian. And she suffered the Corinthians, the Corinthians, nearly died. But because of her piousness, she faith. All the people with eyes disorder. The celebrating her today. She, not only that she believes in God, she lived it out. And not only that she believes, which is the level of matter, but in time to pay the money. The celebrating we did it, and we believed it, and did it to the point. What would the need to do? Not doing believing one thing and doing the other one. And God help us to know this today through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of us. I believe it's our way.
Bruno. 